This video is kindly sponsored by Ren. Let's talk about the first book that I read in 2023. But first, let's make a nice cup of coffee, shall we? Don't look at my dirty coffee machine, it's so gross, but I cannot seem to clean it. way better in the past okay do not look at this <laughs> change of plans i'm gonna go on a day trip with my boyfriend right now and i will film my wrap up on a different day or a different time but first a word from today's sponsor ren ren is a website that you can use to calculate your carbon footprint and then you can offset it by funding various different diverse projects that support reducing carbon like tree planting mineral weathering and rainforest protection i calculated my own carbon footprint and you can do so as well by answering a couple of questions about your lifestyle like where you live do you have a car how many flights do you take each year but we are all individuals and we can only do as much as we can <laughs> and no one can ever reduce their footprint to zero so once you sign up to to Ren to make your monthly contributions. You get lots of updates from them, from the projects that you are supporting. You get to see what your money is spent on with photos and videos, and you get details such as like every single tree that gets planted, every acre that is reforested, and every ton of carbon offset. It will take a lot to end climate crisis, so you can check out all the available information at Ren.co. The first 100 people that sign up to Ren using the link in my description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. So definitely go check out Ren and follow the link down here. And now let's go on to today's video. Hi, it's been a couple of days later. I'm still wearing the same outfit because I think it looks cute. I don't have a cappuccino with me, but I do have this absolutely adorable cup situation that I just recently bought and I made a tea, like a chai tea to be precise. Look at this. I don't know what you call this again. Like the little thing you put underneath the cup. It's perfect and you cannot argue with me otherwise because oh, it's so adorable. Okay, so grab yourself a nice drink because I wanna talk about the six books that I have read until so far in 2023, the two ones that I'm currently reading and my most anticipated read that I cannot wait to pick up in April. I've been so bad at doing monthly wrap ups because I don't read enough books per month. So that's why I like these recently read things. And also I forget that the end of each month is approaching and it happens so quickly. <laughs> so this is the pile of books and some of them I have left at home so I don't have them with me that I have finished reading until so far this year. And let's start off with book number one. I'm so proud that I picked this one up and that I finished a trilogy and that is The Tall by Neil Shusterman. This is the third book in the Scythe trilogy. This is such a chunky book. I believe it's like 600-ish pages. I'm not going to talk about the synopsis of this book because it would spoil the plot for the first two, but I have been talking so much about these books in the past couple of months that I feel like a broken record. I do have to say, even though my enjoyment for the series really kind of like declined from book one on. It was still a thoroughly enjoyable read, but I think the thing that bothered me the most without giving away too much is that I did not know the direction that the story was gonna go into. And I kind of, I don't like that in books when that doesn't happen, when I don't have any idea of what we are working towards or what is happening. I know that for a lot of people, that is absolutely no problem in a book. A problem is like a huge word, but that's kind of what bothered me with this one. The first 100 pages, I was absolutely hooked because book two Two left off on a huge cliffhanger and the first 100 pages this just completely felt like the scythe trilogy like the vibe that I was looking for after that you were introduced to so many new characters and like I said I didn't know what was gonna happen and the end of the story felt really quite sci-fi and not very dystopian so it kind of went into an unexpected direction which I didn't particularly love I didn't particularly hate so in the end I give this one a three and a half out of five stars I did have However, by this short story collection that just came out. Apparently I got the Waterstones exclusive edition, which is called Gleanings. I never buy short story collections, but for the Scythe trilogy, I'm making an exception. And I've heard really great things about this book. I think we will follow different scythes, kind of like how the Scythe Dumb was built up, but maybe also how life goes on after the events of the Tall 
I'm hoping at least that that will be kind of addressed because I'm very curious. And yeah, I was just like so proud of myself for finishing a trilogy because that has been a long time. Speaking of trilogies, I also started reading after that, Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I'm currently hosting a read along together with a ton of amazing like bookish content creators. I have been really bad with promoting this read along because my mental health hasn't been great lately, unfortunately. So that has been taking up a lot of my energy, hence why I haven't uploaded as much as well. This is a trilogy of which I have read the first two books like four years ago and I never read the third book, but I desperately wanted to. So I was like, let's host a read along again. We did a live show discussion of book one. I will leave a link up here on the screen. Truly Devious is like a murder mystery book that gets told through two timelines, like around the 1930s in which a murder happened at this private school owned by Albert Ellingham. And his school kind of like works in the way that you follow whatever courses you're interested in. So for instance, you have people who are very interested in art. You have people who are wanting to become a writer. And then in the second timeline, which is in the now, we follow Stevie who wants to solve this murder that happened in the 1930s at Ellingham Academy. And she wants to like become a private investigator, like a detective. So that's kind of like her expertise. But then also in the now, the students get killed. And it seems like truly devious. The one who is responsible for the 1930s murder is back. I love the like, cozy murder mystery vibes of this book. And like the whole idea of Albert Ellingham's school sounds so interesting, like how it would work. And my reread was a lot of fun because I forgot so many things that happened, but also I have become a little older. <laughs> so it did feel a lot more young adult than it did four years ago for me personally. So sometimes I, I did cringe a little bit at our love interest that kind of like showed up. I wasn't too bothered with it. I just found it mostly very funny. So I think in the end, I lowered my rating, my initial five-star rating to a four-star. For some reason, I was really feeling like picking up a romance book and I rarely read romance novels, but this book was absolutely everything that I needed and more. And that is Take a Hint, Danny Brown, the second book in the Brown Sisters series by Talia Hibbert. And I want romance books with a bit of like, depth in it as well. And Talia Hibbert really knows how to do that. And this one we follow, Danny Brown, and she is like a PhD student and she is so stressed about work, about life in general. She really like hyper fixates on her PhD and doesn't really have much of a social life, but she is in desperate need of a fuck buddy. <laughs> and oh my gosh, our love interest, Saphir, amazing. Um, <laughs> Danny kind of like becomes friends with benefits with Zafir, who is the security guard of the building in which Danny works on her PhD. Zafir also really has to deal with grief. So I guess trigger warnings for that as well and anxiety. So those are like the depth elements that I love to have in a romance novel, but the romance and like the sex scenes, they were so good. <laughs> and it was absolutely everything that I needed. I wanted the lightness of the romance, the sexiness of the romance, but I wanted the depth of the struggles that the characters were dealing with. And I became obsessed and I gave this book a four and a half out of five stars. I haven't picked up the third book in this trilogy yet, but I really want to buy it because I've heard amazing things about that one as well. And that brown sister does a lot with like baking. And I think she wants to like run an Airbnb, like a bed and breakfast, which Sounds like perfection, so I need to buy that book ASAP. <laughs> In between my reads, I read this like tiny, tiny book. I don't have it here with me. And that is Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast by Oscar Wilde. I guess how you could describe this nonfiction book is that like if Oscar Wilde would have like a Twitter account, this would be what he would put on his Twitter. I have little quirky quotes about life from Oscar Wilde. I don't know how else to describe it, but I was laughing out loud a couple of times. Oscar Wilde is so sassy, but did it really add something to my life that's completely unforgettable? No, I just I just had a good time reading these little snippet and like thoughts from him. I would give it a three and a half out of five stars. It was just a nice little in-between read. Then I read this gorgeous book. Oh my gosh. It's called The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. And this edition is everything that you need in your entire life. I got so many compliments on this book alone when I was reading it in like public transport. People were mesmerized. Let me show off more of this beautiful edition. So, I mean, the end pages are amazing. You have this stunning like metallic artwork on the front cover as well. And then this, it's so pretty. However, I was not as impressed by the story and how it was worked out 
in contrast to my impression of the cover. This is a YA fantasy heavily inspired by a Korean legend. How we start off the story is, for generations, deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them with death and despair. To appease him, each year a maiden is thrown into the sea in the hope that one day the true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. Basically, our main character's brother has like a lover and she's kind of like chosen as the bride who will like lift up this curse. But instead Mina throws herself into the ocean as well to kind of like sacrifice herself for her brother's happiness. And she gets thrown into the sea and comes into the spirit spirit realm, that's well, difficult to pronounce. <laughs> and that's where we start off with this promise, like literally page one, this is where the story starts off. She jumps into the ocean and good luck with the rest of the plot. <laughs> and that is the first thing that kind of like bothered me because I did not know Mina's relationship with her brother. Like, I mean, the storyteller tells you that she has a very amazing bond with her family and that she cares so much for her brother. But like the feeling for me personally wasn't there. It was like just described to us. And like I mentioned, you just like completely get thrown into the ocean and get thrown into the spirit realm. And the thing that was missing for me was what's next? What are we working towards? I get why people give this book a five out of five stars because this has been hyped a lot. The writing is beautiful and there are so many amazing descriptions of life and hope and family and love in this book. However, I did really like our love interest in the story and it's totally not an insta lovey YA romance, which I appreciate. And just like how vividly the spirit work, I cannot say that word, realm is pictured on the cover. I kind of like missed that richness, that deepness in her description. So it was very difficult for me to picture what it would look like, how certain houses worked. That's why it's a three star read for me. And unfortunately I wasn't so impressed. Let's see, what did I read next? <laughs> My memory is so fleeting. The latest book that I finished is I think the most popular book in the book community right now, and that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I was like almost 99% sure that this was gonna become a new favorite of mine and it didn't, but it's a very difficult book for me to rate or to really express my feelings because like I said, my mental health hasn't been great overall. And then like this book exactly talks about the topics that really trigger my anxiety. And by that, I mean losing a loved one. And I don't want to spoil anything about this book, but that's like a really big theme more towards the last third of this story. And when something triggers my anxiety, I just, I don't know how to feel about it because I can definitely see that it was worked out well in this book, but it just kind of like, it kind of leaves a bitter aftertaste in my mouth. Okay, but first, what is this book about? We follow Sam and Sadie who have known each other ever since they were like six years old and they met each other in the hospital for different reasons and haven't been in contact for like over 10 years or so when they meet each other again at like a subway station. They are both like studying something in like the programming and gaming field and they decide to make a game together which becomes extremely popular and you follow their life story over the next 30-ish years. They are always together. They're never really lovers, but there's so much love between these characters. And yeah, you basically follow their life story, their success, their fame, how they cannot like live without, but also not with one another. So that was very interesting to explore. I don't know, the characters did really annoy me quite often to be honest and the way that they just could not communicate with one another. But I do feel like if you enjoy normal people, this is probably kind of like the same type of book that you like to read about. Just emotionally damaged main characters who have trouble communicating their feelings and their thoughts and their wishes and expectations. And I don't wanna say anything else about this book because I kind of like feel like that would be a huge spoiler. This book definitely expressed my exact thoughts and feelings on depression, on mental health, on feeling lonely whilst not being alone, which I just, I really appreciated that my inner thinkings, like my thoughts were put exactly into the words that as you can tell, I cannot produce myself. Speaking is not my, uh, <laughs> my expertise, but maybe you can kind of like see where I'm coming from with if a book triggers your anxiety, it just complicates your feelings towards the book. So whenever I look at it right now, I'm just like, oh, it was, it was beautiful, but it was so painful and it made me feel a bit uh, as well. And it's a complicated book. So my rating would also be kind of complicated. I think like around a three and a half to a four out of five stars. I do see why people love it so much, but I can also understand why people aren't too impressed. And now on to the two books that I'm currently reading and planning on finishing soon. So the first one 
is The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, book two in the trilogy. We are pulling through with the read along. I'm almost halfway through and I'm just like flying through it. It's so easy to read. Also, the pages are quite like small and the font is really quite big and the audiobook is fantastic. Until so far, my enjoyment is around the same level as book one. So that's fun. But like the conversations are sometimes a little bit like over the top dramatic or just kind of cringe worthy. <laughs> and I'm still working on finding a date with everyone for book three, which is The Hand on the Wall, which I'm so excited to pick up soon as well. And then with a group of girls from my study, psychology, we hosted like an expert session with a sex therapist. And everyone in that group was so incredibly enthusiastic. And we're like, we have to keep this group chat and make a sex book club. So on the 3rd of April, we will be discussing Come As You Are by Emily Nagowski. And I have been reading this book for over one and a half years and I'm only this far into it. I have been making like little annotations in it as well. But until so far, I've just like learned a lot of like the anatomy things. And I do know of a lot of information that has been described in this book. Hence why I haven't really continued on with it. But my plan is to listen to the audiobook because that would kind of make it feel like I'm listening to a podcast. So I'm gonna finish that. And my most anticipated release, which is coming out in April in my birthday month, is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I have become an Emily Henry stan ever since last year. I have read all three of her romance books and I need that serotonin boost of her work. So I just need y'all to know that this book is coming out and you need to write it down on your calendars. Don't ask me what it's about though, because I have no clue. So these are the books that I have read until so far in 2023. I mean, like my reading plans are to read 30 books this year. And I feel like until so far I am on track. But besides that, I haven't really made any goals. I just wanna see what reading mood I'm in and kind of just like go with the flow. So those are my reading plans. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. Don't forget to check out Ren as well. Thank you so much Ren for sponsoring today's video. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.